In this video, I will show you a way to deal with dividing amounts with metric units of measurements that are similar across the calculation. It could be length, or it could be weight all across, or it could be capacity for all amounts involved. And it's going to be dealt with this three-step method here. Step one, convert the given units to base units. Step two, do the division. Step three, convert the answer from that division to requested units. Uh, let's get started with something that's straightforward. This three-step approach could be shortened as needed. I'll show you what I mean and uh, let's just do some math here. For example, you might want to set up a fence along your property that has an eight meter long length somewhere and you want four panels of fence to be set up there. It's obvious from this that each panel needs to be two meters long. Uh, this one is a simpler one because there is no requested amount here so there's no conversion at the end. I just wanted to make it simple at the end here and uh, the meters here is a base unit. It doesn't need to be converted to base unit. So basic, So all we did is just do the division. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And what you can do in this case is just copy the only unit of measurement into the answer. If I don't see a unit of measurement with your calculation on your quizzes or work, you don't get a mark for it. I have another example here that works with weight. For example, you have a 50 kilogram mass that two apprentices lift on the job. The two apprentices, they don't have a unit of measurement. Only the mass has a unit of measurement, 50 kilos. If two of them are lifting it, each of them will lift a mass of 25 kilograms. You can call it weight as well here. Uh, focus on the math here, not the physics, okay? In this one, please notice that the word kilogram has a metric prefix in it, kilo. It's not a base unit in terms of math. Nevertheless, we did not convert it to a base unit because that's the only unit in the whole calculation. Like previously, just copy the only unit into the final answer. Another one that works fairly easily as well is involving capacity. For example, you have a 30 hectoliter uh, tank full of milk. You want to take three turns and you want to empty the tank. You need to have a truck that has a 10 hectoliter capacity. Same principles apply. Even though hectoliter is not a base unit, hecto makes the liter a base unit uh, makes it not a base unit, it's a prefix. However, it is the only unit of measurement in the calculation, so it just copies into the answer as is. So that's where the simple calculations pretty much end. Let's take a look at something that's not going to be simple. For example, you have a piece of carpet and uh, that was given you as a gift. The person who gave it to you told you that its size is 7,500 square decimeters. Its width is 75 centimeters. You want to know how long it is in millimeters. To do this, you need this three-step approach. You need to convert those to square meters, that amount to meters, and you're going to get out of it a meter amount that you will need to convert to the requested amount to the requested unit to millimeters and if you tried to do just the numbers alone 7500 7, divided by 75 it's 100 no the piece of carpet is not 100 meters or 100 millimeters long forget about it in this one this three-step approach is needed because because the outcome of the calculation is massively affected by the meaning of the units of measurement. To get started, 
Uh, let's go with the first amount. 7500 square decimeters. For that, please recall that in a previous lesson that was titled Metric Multiplication with Similar Units of Measurement, we had this sheet of paper where I uh, showed you guys that one square decimeter is one decimeter by one decimeter piece of area and uh, it is 100 square centimeters. The exchange rate among square units of measurements is not tenfold. 100 square centimeters make one square decimeter and 100 square decimeters will make one square meter. And uh, to get started with this calculation, I'm going to copy 7500. Okay, I wrote it to the wrong spot. It should be here. 7500 square decimeters there. And to do it, I'll just white out, do a little white out on that one. Please notice that from square decimeters to square meters, that would be the base unit here. It's only one jump. One jump, all right, but it's a hundred fold, a hundred time increase. Each time you move the decimal dot, 7500 is the same as 7500.0. When you move the decimal dot just one spot over, it's only a tenfold increase. So here, don't rely on counting the number of jumps. You have to look at the magnitude of the jump. So it's a hundredfold increase. You have to move the decimal dot in the same direction, but two spots because the 100 has two zeros in it. So the answer is 75 square meters. That's the first conversion. 75 square meters is the size of the carpet. That's a nice size. That's a two or a three bedroom apartment. Its width is 75 centimeters. The centimeters need to be converted to meters again. And for that, I'm going to write it up here again. Centimeter, millimeter, decimeter, sorry, meter. We have 75 centimeters and we're converting it to base units meters it's two jumps nothing is a square centimeter here everything is just straight 10 time increase for every jump so we're going two spots over that way 75 centimeters is the same as 75.0 there's the decimal dot and it's moving over two spots that's the answer 0 0.75 meters so 75 square meters is gonna be divided by 0 0.75 75 meters. What does that equal to? Here's my calculator just to be on the safe side. And 75 divided by 0 0.75 is going to equal 100. 100 meters it is. Sorry guys, I don't know what happened to my writing today. That's going to be 100 meters. That's the answer, but that's not the final answer. Because so far, we converted the given amounts to base units, to square meters and meters. We did the division. So far, so good. Last step, we need to convert this answer to the requested units. So 100 meters. 100 meters is here and it needs to be converted to millimeters so we're going from meters one two three spots over to millimeters that means 100 is the same as 100.0 and we're moving it one two three spots over that's the answer 100,000.0 but that's not 
necessary. So it's just 100,000 millimeters. It converts to be 100,000 millimeters. There you have it. So, if you if you just went with 7,500 divided by 75, that is 100, but not 100 millimeters. So, you have to follow this approach here to stay on top of the math here. One more calculation I'm going to show you, and this will involve cubic amounts. Here is a swimming pool idea here that I came up with. It's a vastly exaggerated swimming pool that needs one cubic kilometer of water. One cubic kilometer is fairly straightforward to visualize. If one cubic decimeter is a cube that is one decimeter by one decimeter by one decimeter, a cubic kilometer is going to be one kilometer by one kilometer by one kilometer. It's fairly compact, or so it seems. You want to make a swimming pool that has a nice diving depth, 11,805 millimeters of depth. You want to make it 5,600 centimeters wide. You need to know how long it should be to contain one cubic kilometers, kilometer of water. To do it, we're going to have to go back again to this three-step approach convert everything to base units. Let's get started. One cubic kilometer is, please recall that the cubic amounts here uh, have a number three in their corners. So even though kilo from base unit is three jumps away in that direction, every jump is a thousand fold Okay, my thousands barely fit here, but uh, my uh, yeah, my point will get through here. That one has three zeros, three zeros, and three zeros. One cubic kilometer of water is the same as one three zeros there. Second set of three zeros, third set of three zeros. That's one billion cubic meters of water. So that's going to be the capacity of the swimming pool. This needs to be divided by the second amount, either one of those. We're going to need to convert it to meters again to base units. We're going from, let's get started with this one, millimeters. We're going from millimeters, here is milli. We're going to, be to the base unit meters. It's three jumps in that direction. So you grab the decimal dot from there and you move it one, two, three spots. That's gonna be 11.805 meters. And this has to be divided yet again by that number. We're going from centimeters Centimeters are here. Centimeters to meters, it's one, two jumps away in that direction. So you get the decimal point there. 5600 is the same as 5600.0. And you move it two spots over, 56 meters. 56 meters. So we have 1 billion divided by 11.805 divided by 56. And that's going to give us the length of this swimming pool. Let's see this calculation here. One, three zero, three more zeros, let's see, there. Three sets of three zeros, nine zeros there, divided by 11.805, and divided again by 56. What's the answer? The answer is that number. 1,512,676. I'm just gonna leave out the point two. Don't worry about it. And this answer is in meters because 
cubic meters divided by meters divided by meters will equal in meters. So that's one million meters, one, one and a half million meters. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick conversion on this one into kilometers. That's 1512.6 kilometers. For this kind of swimming pool, your country may not be long enough. However, that's how math is done. Uh, the numbers don't lie. The, uh, the sense in the calculation uh, is uh, not up to me to judge, but uh, this is how you can apply this three-step method consistently to carry you through, through any calculations that involves metric units. Instead of cubic kilometers, this could be space or distance in space where, where distances are really, really huge and a uh, uh, swimming pool that's uh, 1,500 kilometers long is uh, a little excessive, but uh, you get the idea. These distances and the magnitude of these numbers work well in calculating space, whatever distances between stars and those kind of things. So, you have to practice these calculations. In, and here is some ideas. Instead of a cubic kilometer, or well, this amount of water, one cubic kilometer of water, uh, it would take 16 years for the Niagara Falls to fill it. Okay, so, so that's why the swimming pool needs to be that long. It's, there's no mistake here. So to get you started with some practice problems, uh, change, change the depth of the, the swimming pool or change the width of it by at least, I don't know, a thousand then not only change the numbers, change that one to decimeters and that one to meters and uh, that one to cubic meters and see what you get out of it. Okay, I can't do the learning for you. You gotta change these numbers and these units of measurements. Instead of carpet, calculate drywall or something practical. Uh, you could calculate uh, laminate flooring or any of those things. I can't do the learning for you. You practice on your own.